Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for what you have begun to do. Thank you because you are here with us. Thank you because you are the God of our strength. Thank you because you are our helper. You are our leader. You are our helper. You are our teacher. We thank you because you are not tired of us. You are not weary of us. Oh, you won't stop your work in us until we attain the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We give you praise because you are not tired of equipping us. You are not tired of training us. Blessed be your holy name tonight. Lord, we are here to know, to know. For your word says it is given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Father, we position ourselves tonight to receive from you. Please, Lord, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Our ears are open. Our hearts are open. Our eyes are open to receive from you. In the name of Jesus, we hear with understanding. We see with understanding. In the name of Jesus, our hearts perceive you correctly. In the name of Jesus, we are helped. In the name of Jesus, we are quickened by your word. In the name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord our King forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Wherever you are hearing me tonight, on site, on ground, online, um, grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied unto you from God and um, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, welcome to Bible study. Um, God is intentional about us. God is not casual about us. He's a Father that cares for us. And tonight, I trust that. You are going to receive the word of life. I trust that God is going to speak to you tonight. Um, so uh, we have been on the subject of the exploit of faith. And then um, by God's grace, we have been looking at the various icons, various models that are recorded um, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 has been uh, the scripture of focus. And by God's grace, um, God has helped us to look at the uh, the various icons so far. God has helped us to look to some extent at um, our father Abel. God has helped us to look to some extent. The reason why I'm saying to some extent is because uh, every teaching you hear here is not the end. It's not exhaustive. It's not an exhaustive teaching. Even if we spend 10 years teaching it, we we'll still not be able to unpack and unravel the things that are there. So we keep on discovering. So I encourage you that you can take it to another level by doing a personal study on every icon of faith that is mentioned there. So we have delved into the life of our father Abel. We looked also into the life of our father Enoch. Um, and then we have looked to uh, last week, upper week and last week, we were, uh, we were looking at our father, Noah. Noah. And so the messages are online. The messages are on YouTube. The messages are on our Telegram channel. Please feel free to go there and download freely. The Bible says anyone that is thirsty or hungry, let them go and what? Drink freely. So uh, go freely to our Telegram channel and to our YouTube uh, channel and then help yourself by what? By downloading it god bless you as you do so and don't just download it alone listen to it give it to friends give it to your mentees give it to your sons and daughters give it to your uh to people and be a blessing to them let them also taste of the goodness of god uh in this uh, season amen glory to god um amen hallelujah so today by god's grace uh this is going this, today's just going to be an introduction actually because the whole scripture from Genesis to Revelation is littered uh with the with this icon of faith that we are going to look at. Uh we are looking at um the lives of our father Abraham and our mother Sarah, and then um, you see so many things we have so many things to say about them. But I just want us to see certain things in the scripture. I want to take us into the scripture. I want us to see certain things. Why are we considering these people? Why are we looking at their lives? Uh, you can turn your Bibles with me wherever you are to Hebrews chapter 6. 
Hebrews chapter 6. The book of Hebrews and chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I want us to read. I would have loved us to read from um, verse 12. But uh, for it to make a little bit of sense to us. Uh, I want us to read from verse 10. Or maybe we start reading from verse 9. So we are going to do a long reading to verse 20. Because um, I'm going to dwell so much on the things in there. Yeah. I'm going to take time, my time to explain a lot of things to us from in there. Ah, the Bible says, but beloved, I'm reading from verse 9. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward this name, in that you have ministered to the saints, and do minister. Verse 11. And we desire that each one of you should show, sorry, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Verse 12. That is uh, my golden scripture, my golden verse. Please hold on to it. The Bible says that you do not become sluggish. The JV says that you do not become slothful. Uh, It says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. In other words, if it's about blessing, forget it, I will bless you. If it's about multiplying, forget it, I will multiply you. Verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an hold for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show up more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an hold. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. These hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the power has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Well, I might not be able to delve into uh, the the things that have been referred to from verse 17 to 20. But, um, Lord, we pray, let there be all trans tonight and let there be all, let there be understanding. Let there be unshown, let there be all trans. Let uh, there be quickening for our ears and for our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, I said that my golden scripture, my golden verse, is that you do not become sluggish, verse 12, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And if you will check, if you will check verse 11 with me, the Bible says, and we desire that each one of you should show the same diligence, the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. What does that mean? In other words, the Bible is saying you should show the same diligence. The same diligence. What is the same diligence? The same diligence is that what? Faith. You should walk it by faith and patience. That's the same diligence. Because the scripture tells us in verse 12, you should not become sluggish. What does it mean to become sluggish? It means don't become sluggish. Don't become slothful. Don't become slow. Don't become indolent. Don't become dull. Don't become languid. Don't become lazy. Don't become stupid. Hallelujah. Every child of God, every child of God is advised here that you should not what? Be sluggish. Don't be slow. We are on a journey. Don't be slow. We are on a journey. Don't be lazy. We are on a journey. Don't be stupid. 
You are on a journey. Don't be languid. You are on a journey. Don't be dull. God has not called every any of his children to sluggishness. He has not called us to laziness. And so the Bible is saying, don't be lazy. Don't be stupid. Don't be languid. Don't be indolent. Don't be slothful. The Bible, is now, the Bible now said, but be ye imitator of those, or be ye followers. What does that mean? It means every of the people we refer to in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, one thing is common to them. One thing is common to them, and that thing is the fact that none of them is sluggish. For every patriarch, for every matriarch that have their uh, names in the hall of faith, like we call them, what we see in their life is that none of them, beginning with Hebel, to the women who receive their dead back to life, to Samson and all of those people, one thing you will find in their life, or one thing you will find in their lives, is that they are not lazy they are not slothful they are not slow one thing you see the common denominator you see about people who are walking by faith is that they don't condone laziness in their life they don't condone sluggishness they don't condone slothfulness they don't condone indolence the call to walk by faith is not the call for lazy people the call to walk by faith is not the call for indolent people. Is not the call for slow people. Is not the call for. Is not. Is not a move. Is not. In other words, a slothful person cannot survive. Christianity is not for. Christianity is not for slow people. Is not for people that are slow. Is not for people that are dull. Is not for people that are stupid. Hallelujah. So the scripture is saying here that. None of these fathers, none of these mothers are sluggish. And so in verse 11 of this Hebrews chapter 6, we see the Bible is saying we should show the same diligence. So what does it mean? It means every of these fathers, every of these mothers that we have their name written in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, none of them is lazy. They are diligent. They are diligent. They are diligent. I, I, I'm tempted to go to a, a particular scripture. You see, diligence in the kingdom of God is not uh, is not something that you can underestimate. The kingdom of God is not for the lazy ones. The kingdom of God is not for the slothful. The kingdom of the, of God is for the diligent. It's for the people who are diligent. Amen. And so the Bible is calling our attention to in Hebrews chapter. Uh, 6 verse 12 that you know, show the same diligence don't be lazy don't be stupid don't be dull don't be slothful don't be slow hallelujah glory to God glory to God amen glory to God now you see you see verse 12 says that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Okay. I feel as I feel as though the Holy Spirit wants me to open that scripture. Let's travel. Let's travel there. Um Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. I want to read from verse five to um, okay, let me just read from verse 1 and read forward. So the Bible says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Giving all diligence. Can you see again? The word diligence is appearing there. Giving all diligence. And so in verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible says we should so, show the same diligence. So the Bible is saying, uh, Giving all diligence, part to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and are bound, you will neither be barren 
nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Verse 10 now says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Hallelujah. So verse, verse, verse 11 says, And we desire that each one of you should show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. So this kind of diligence is a kind of diligence that you show from start to finish. There must never be a time where you say, okay, 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 um, I don't want to be diligent today, I just want to be sluggish. Oh, I just want to be slow. Oh, today I want to be stupid. Oh, today I want to be languid. Oh, today I want to be dull. No, 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 there is no room for that. The Bible says we are supposed to show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until when, until the end. And that's what you will see in the, in the patriarchs, in the matriarchs. From start to finish, what you will see in their lives is diligence. They were diligent from top to bottom or from bottom to top, from start to finish. And so, uh, why are we studying, why are we looking at the aspect of faith and why are we looking at these icons of faith? It's because uh, we want to learn from their lives. We want to see, and one of the things we are seeing from their lives now is that what? They were diligent people. They were not sluggish. So the Bible says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hallelujah. Now, we are looking at our father Abraham, and I know why I'm setting this background. I know why I'm setting this background because I, I want to help us. I want to help us. Now, so, from this scripture, the Bible says that we should be followers of them. And then my own version says, MKJV says, we should be imitators of them. Um, who through faith and patience obtain what or inherit the promises. So it means if there were promises for our patriarchs, our fathers to inherit, it means for us too, it has not changed. It means um, there are also promises for us to what inherit like them. So everybody who is a child of God, who, is, who has become born again, has a promise to inherit. Whether you know it or not, you have a promise to inherit. Or you have promises to inherit. The Bible says that he, he has given us exceeding great and precious promises. So all these promises are for us to inherit, are for us to obtain. So every child of God, born of God, has promises that he must obtain, he must inherit. It is a must. These promises are not for decoration. These promises are yours for inheritance. They are yours for obtainers. We have to obtain them. Amen. Hallelujah. So, there are promises that must be inherited. And just like we saw in the lives of our fathers and mothers in Hebrews 11, they obtained several promises. Even though the Bible says there were promises that they did not attain to. That is the advantage that we have over them. But in their own small mayors, there were promises that they were able to lay hold on in bits. They may not have laid hold on the fullness of these promises. They lay hold on the bit by bit of all these promises. And God is saying to us that, see, the way they obtained these promises was that they were not diligent. And how did we, I'm sorry, they were not sluggish. And how did we know that they were not sluggish? When we are talking about diligence in the kingdom of God, we are talking about two things majorly. We are talking about two major technologies. We are talking about the technology of faith and we are talking about the technology of patience. So the Bible is saying here that look at the fathers, look at the mothers. The way they were able to obtain the promises that God made for them was that they used the technology of faith and patience because this is the only approved way. This is the way, this is the approved way by God. So we're reading in Hebrews 11, and the Bible is saying, by this, by faith, fathers obtained good report. In other words, they obtained testimonies, they obtained the approval of God. 
So the approved way to inherit the promises of God in the kingdom of God is the faith patience technology. And the Bible is saying that you see, fathers obtain promises, mothers obtain promises through faith and patience because that is the those are the only that is the only technology through which you can obtain anything that God has made available. Anything that God has spoken can only be achieved, can only be obtained, it can only become your own if you told the path of faith and patience. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying that if there is anybody you should imitate, you should not conform to this word. If there is anybody you should imitate, if there is anybody you should copy, if there is anybody you should follow, hey, the Bible says you should follow the people who through faith and patience inherit the promise. You know, for them, for them, for the fathers, they are nobody to copy. They are nobody to follow. Hallelujah. But for us, the advantage we have in Christ Jesus is that these icons are present for us. They are available for us. And we can learn. We can copy them. We can look at what they did to obtain what they obtained. Uh, and we too, we also arrive at the place where they arrived. That is our advantage. We are at advantage because we have the ability to copy them. We have the ability to imitate them. And so the Bible says, if there is anything, we should follow them. We should imitate them. Why? They were not sluggish. So we should also copy them that they were not sluggish. We should copy that they were not sluggish. We should copy their diligence. Their diligence should be a curriculum, should become a curriculum for us. The Bible says they obtain the promise through faith and patience. And so the Bible says we should also look into their lives. We should look at them. We should study them diligently so that we can also come to a point where we also use faith and patience like them to obtain whatsoever promises the Lord has made available for us. In other words, what does that mean to us? The Bible says that we should copy them. We should follow them. What does that mean? It means those who through faith and patience obtain or inherit the, the promises of God, they are not heroes. They are not supposed to be heroes. They are supposed to be our role models. We are, they are supposed to be examples for us to follow and imitate. They are supposed to be role models examples to be followed and imitated. One of the problems we have in these days and time is that we we copy or we follow the wrong people. And this is God recommending a particular set of people to us and saying, hello, my children. There are certain people who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. They have passed through what you are passing through today. And what they are, they, are, they are victorious. They succeeded. And let me show you how they succeeded. They succeeded by faith and patience, right? And they obtained the promise. So you to copy them. In other words, God has shown us who we should copy. God has shown us who we should follow. God has recommended these people to us as models. They are not just heroes to be spoken about. They are the beginning of our possibilities. Through their lives, we can learn how to use faith. Through their lives, we can learn how to use patience. Through their lives, we can learn how to walk by faith, how to see by faith, how to act by faith. Through their lives, we can learn the principles of faith and patience. So, and it does not just mean that we just learn alone. Through this learning, the learning in the kingdom of God is so that you learn and you are imparted. So this is not just a, a, a call to just learn like an apprentice alone. This is a call to be imparted, to inherit the grace of God that worked with these people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So these people are role models. 
And what we see about them is that they were not sluggish, they were diligent in the pursuit of the promises. Now, the, the, the question I want to ask you, how crazy are you about the promises of God? How hungry, how thirsty are you? How desirous of the promises of God are you? How crazy are you about inheriting everything that God said he has made available for you? How crazy are you about it? Because we, we, we need to even, many of us, we crave for the, for the inheritance of the promises of God. We crave to want to obtain it, but we are sluggish. We are lazy. We are slothful. We are dull. We are languid. We are lazy. We are stupid. But God is saying, stop being stupid. Stop being lazy. There are examples in front of you. There are examples in my word. The Bible says, whatsoever are written in God's word, they are written. Whatsoever are written in the scripture, they are written for our learning. So God wants us to learn from the lives of these people. God wants us to know that his principles have not changed. The pathway to obtaining the promise of God remains the same. It has not changed. And that pathway, that technology remains the faith, patience technology. What you see about the fathers, about the mothers in, in Hebrews 11 is that they had understanding of the faith, of faith and patience. And what he's saying, if you also want to have the understanding of faith and patience, what you simply need to do is to study them, is to look at them, is to learn from them. Amen. These people know that they, they, they know that without faith and patience, it is impossible to obtain or inherit any promises that God has made. So they knew that the only means of inheriting the promises is to use the faith patience technology. So all through their lifetime, what they concentrated their energy upon, the vision before them is the promises of God. They are the promises of God. The vision before the face of all the patriarchs and matriarchs is the promise, is the attainers, is the inheritance. Anybody that comes to this world and is a child of God and your hunger and thirst is not after the, 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 the inheritance of the promises of God. is a shame. God is saying to us that what should be our vision as children of God is the inheritance of the promises. You see, your vision determines what you have as your vision determines what you will do. Yes. What you have as your vision determines what you will do. If you are in a class with somebody who just needs the certificate, who just needs the certificate, you will see that his vision is just to get the certificate. You will see that the way they will do things, the diligence they will apply to them, is, is not the same as somebody who has a vision of coming top of the class. So these people have made in the inheritance of the promises of God their vision. And so they, they, they understand that understood that to attain to fulfill their vision of obtaining the promises of God they have to use faith and patience you know I was saying it at the beginning of this series that the patriarchs understood certain things and then the Bible says anyone that wants to come to God must know that he is and is the reward of them that they gently speak him. so they had that understanding so these people, they knew that the only means of inheriting the promises of God is to use faith and patience. And if you read Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible specifically was using Abraham as the major example. 
that what you will see in the life of Abraham is that Abraham understood the faith patience technology. So Abraham was not just the father of faith, Abraham was the father of patience. Because you see, if you see faith, you will also see patience. Amen. So the Bible says they didn't just use faith to obtain the promise. They didn't just use faith. They also use patience. The scripture says we must have need of patience so that after we have done the will of God, we might obtain the promise of God. So we know that faith is doing the will of God. When you have faith, you are doing the will of God. But you see, he that believeth, one of the characteristics you see in your life is that they do not make haste. The Bible says anyone that is walking by faith, they are not hasty. They are not hasty in decisions, they are not hasty in words, they are not hasty in actions. So the Bible was specifically bringing Abraham out here and saying, you see Abraham, is an accurate, is, is, a, is a perfect example of faith, patience, technology. So he had faith, he did the will of God, but he obtained the promise through faith, patience, technology. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to show that scripture so that uh, we can know. Uh, James. James. So James chapter 1. Verse 3 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4 says, But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 4, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Okay. Um, I think we should go to Peter 2. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. What did he say? He says, For look at it. Look at it. Verse 35. Let's start reading from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. He says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So he was talking about your confidence in verse 35. Of course, we know that our confidence is our faith. So he said, cast not away your confidence. It has what great compares of the world. Because God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he now says in verse 36 that, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise of God. You, you, you have received the promise. So we know that faith... Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please what God. So we know that faith, having faith, believing God, is what is His will. But the Bible is saying here that you see, it must be faith that is complemented with what patience. Because you, if you have faith alone, faith may not totally the faith that is faith in the kingdom of God is a faith that is garnished with patience. Is a kind of faith that can wait upon the Lord. That knows that whether God comes late or it comes early, ah, 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 God will still come. That's not the kind of faith that try, that try to help God, that is impatient. So, Saul, uh, Samuel said he was coming and Saul could not wait for the seventh day. And thought, so that is not the kind of faith we are talking about. We are talking about the faith that Abraham had. No matter how long, Abraham waited to, and that waiting speaks about patience. He was patient. Amen. And so the Bible is saying, true faith and patience inherit the what? The promise. It is not patience and faith. Patience is not really patience if faith is not ahead. Amen. Don't if faith if you are not working in faith, I, I I practically do not advise patience. Amen. But if faith is ahead, then patience should also be coming. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. You have need of patience. Our fathers and mothers, they had faith, but they also knew that they needed patience. So they had it. So we saw patience in the life of Noah. God said, a plot is coming, made Allah. He did that. He did that. And, 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 and in doing that, he took years. He was patient till the promise came. We saw that in Enoch. Enoch, God said, I'm coming when he gave back. You know, the years, imagine, he began to work with the Lord when he was 65 years. And for another 300 years, nothing happened. God said he was going to do something and nothing happened. But he was patient. Amen. Amen. And so we, we see here that there is a lesson to learn. And God is saying, imitate them. Copy them. You see, there is a time when imitation is not limitation. These are one of these times. When God himself recommends a people for us to follow, a people for us to copy. You don't want to copy people from the world. Come on. You see, I look at a lot of things and I'm pissed off because we are trying to we are preoccupied with the wrong things. And God is saying, come on, don't be preoccupied. You see, it doesn't matter whether you are active in other things or not. It doesn't even matter maybe you are, you are an action person in other things. As far as you are not on the path of faith and patience, you are sluggish. As, no matter how much you may be working, if it's not a working to obtain the promises of God, as a matter of fact, the whole duty of your life when you give your life to Christ, is, in a, is, is to inherit. There are too many promises for you to hear. It. And how you will begin to measure whether you are overcoming and conquering and winning as a child of God is how much of these promises you look back so far in God that you have obtained. How much of the promises, whether the general one or the specific ones that is made for you, how much of them you have inherited? You have obtained, and, and mind you, it is an inherit. It is an inheritance, meaning that the moment you obtain them, it, the moment you lay hold on them, it, it becomes yours. It becomes yours. So it is an inheritance. So what all the fathers, what all the matriarchs we are talking about in Hebrews eleven, what they did, they were not something that they just they, they just stumbled on. There were things that the things that they did. The things that they did, the things that they obtained, were they became their inheritance. Those things became the inheritance. The will of God is that all His promises, when you attain them, when you obtain them, should be your possession forever. Should be your inheritance forever. Should be your her heritage forever. Should be your property forever. For example, if God promises that He will use you in the area of healing. The moment you have taken that promise, you should not be doubtful. You should not be something about uh, okay. Except if it's not if it's not true faith and patience that you got there. If it's true faith and patience, God is saying that thing should become your inheritance. That thing should shift from just being the promises of God for you to becoming your inheritance. That is how our fathers think. That is how they shifted. They shifted. By faith and patience, they shifted the promises of God. They shifted the promise of God from just becoming the promises of God. They shifted it to their own properties. And by the way, when we talk about Abraham, we talk about the father of faith. Because we, we, we because those things, the Bible says, Noah became the heir of righteousness. He became and, 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 and those things became their inheritance. They became their property. They became their possession. If God is talking about the exploit of faith, my brothers and sisters in law, He's not just talking about God is not joking. God is bringing us to a place of inheritance. So that if we can copy these fathers and mothers who through faith and patience, if we can copy them too, we too, and we use the principles of faith and patience, we use the technology of faith and patience, um, 
those things we also change from just being the promises of God to us to becoming our own inheritance. God wants us to own things in Him. God wants His promises to become our heritage. God wants His promises to become our property. God wants those things, those promises to move from just being His promises to becoming things that are fulfilled. And not just things that are fulfilled. Those fulfillment becomes our inheritance. Amen. Amen. So, God says, by imitating, it means that we, if God is saying we should imitate those who through faith and patience, what that, mean, what that means is that we should study them, we should learn from them, we should let their lifestyle or their lives and times instruct us, we should let their lives and times activate us, we should let their lives and times become principles for us. So that they now become the things that we also now use. In other words, these people are the university that we should attend to learn the courses of faith and patience. In other words, um, faith and patience can be learned and can be called when we sit down and study the lives of these people. When we imitate the things they did, when we copy the things they did, when we follow the, the things they did, and that is what God expects from us. These people have to become our course outline. They have to become our curriculum and syllabus of study in this journey. So God is saying, this is not a joke. This is not a, 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 a circus. This is a journey. A journey for only, strictly for people only. Strictly for people who want to obtain the promise. This is not a, a call to people who are here to play. Because if you are there to play, you will be slothful, you will be lazy, you will be stupid, you will be languid, you will be dull. God does not want any of those things. And God is saying, if you are serious about obtaining the promises, then come and imitate these people. What do they use to obtain it? Faith and patience. So if you are also going to obtain it, you are also going to use faith and patience. And if you are going to learn faith and patience, they are prescribed. I am prescribing them for you, for you to learn faith and patience from their lives. And the lessons you learn from their lives, you can now apply it to your own personal life. And then you also, you will now become an inheritor of the promises of God. Amen. I think I have flogged that in. So let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 51. So I want us to begin to talk about our father Abraham. And you see, Abraham is in the class of his own. Abraham is in the class of his own. Abraham is not in the same class with Enoch. Abraham is not in the same class with Abel. Abraham is not in the same class with Noah. Abraham is in the class of his own. And I'm going to be saying certain things this evening. I'm going to be saying certain things this evening that are very, very instructive. I trust God for fortunes. I trust God for function. I trust God that I'm able to say it exactly the way he wants me to say it. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51, I'm reading from verse 1. So if you are, read, if you are reading KJV, you will see acting unto me. But if you are using uh, NKJV like I'm using, I love to use NKJV. Uh, then um, you will see listen. So you see something like listen to me, you who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were healed and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord we comfort, from verse 3, for the Lord we comfort Zion. He will comfort all our waste places. He will make a wilderness like Eden and a, dis, and a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, 
The first thing you see here, uh, you see verse 1 and verse 2. And um, you will see that the reason why God is instructing us about verse 1 and verse 2 is because of verse 3. Anywhere you see for, you will see because. And it is because of verse 3 that God is admonishing us to embrace verse 1 and verse 2. He says, because the Lord wants to comfort Zion. Because the Lord wants to comfort all our waste places. And that's why he's giving the admonition, he's giving in verse 1. He's saying, listen to me. If you follow after righteousness, listen to me. If you seek the Lord, do what? Listen to me. And he says, if you are such a person who follow after righteousness, and if you are a God speaker, then I have an encouragement for you. I have a prescription for you. You are somebody who follow after righteousness. I want you to listen to me. Because you see, uh, it's not just enough to follow after righteousness. So he says, he says, if you are among the people who follow after righteousness, and if you are among those people who seek the Lord, then I have a counsel for you. And if I have this counsel for you, it is because of what I plan to do for you. What is God plan to do? You see it in verse 3. God says, I want to comfort Zion. And it is because of this that I'm reaching out to you. I, I want to make our waste places. I want to, I want to comfort our waste places. I want to make the wilderness to be like Eden. In other words, I want to beautify your life. I want to do a lot of things. I want to do a new thing. But you see, uh, because I want to do a new thing, verse 1 and verse 2 is my recommendation for you. Because you see, you need a new mindset to be able to receive. And if you don't have those new mindsets, it will affect what I want to do. And it is because of what I want to do in verse 3, that's why I am saying something about verse 1 and verse 2. And what am I saying in verse 1? Verse 1, in verse 1, I'm saying that if you are among, I'm making a call out. God is making an announcement, a pronouncement, that if you are among those people who follow after righteousness, if you are among those people who seek the Lord, then you need to listen and listen attentively. If you are not among those people, there is no problem. And as a matter of fact, if you are not among those people, the thing is not going to apply to you. Amen. Mm-hmm. But I. I if you are not those people, you need to listen to this announcement. So he says, if you follow after righteousness, listen to me. If you seek the Lord, listen to me. And the next thing he will say is that look to the rock. Or in other words, look at the rock from which you were in. And to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. And so the, the, those people might be wondering, which rock? Which all? Then it's, it quickly mentioned it in verse 3. That, uh, in verse 2, it says, See, the rock I'm talking about and the, 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 the pit I'm talking about is your father Abraham and your mother Sarah. So here the Bible is saying that if you follow after righteousness and you seek after the Lord, you are not the first to do that. You have a father. You have a mother. And what does the father and the mother mean in that? It means you are not the first to follow after righteousness. You are not the first to seek the Lord. As a matter of fact, the reason why you could follow after righteousness and you could seek after righteousness is because you have a pioneer. You have a father. You have a father. Abraham and Sarah, they were the pioneer of following after righteousness. They were the source of seeking after the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the Bible is saying here that Abraham and Sarah were the rock. They were your parents. They were the pits. Amen. And so if you find yourself Walking after righteousness and seeking the Lord is because you were 
you were sculptured or you came out of a particular lineage is because somebody gave back to you. The Bible says the rock from which you were hewn. In other words, there is a rock from which you were cut down. That rock is Abraham. There is a pit from which you were dug out. That pit is Abraham and Sarah. And the characteristics of those two people is that number one, they also they were people who pioneered working after righteousness. They were people who pioneered seeking the Lord. And so they are your father. So don't start going over about thinking, oh, you were the first to follow after righteousness. You were the first to seek the Lord. The Bible is saying here that see, your parents who pioneered this move, who pioneered this lifestyle. And if you suddenly find yourself following after righteousness and seeking the Lord, you have parents. And in case, you know, the Bible says that, um, I said the Bible, you know, the Bible probably say that any river or any stream that forgets its source will dry up. So we have a source. We have pioneers. We have faith setters. We have faith blazers who started the, the walking after righteousness. The following after righteousness. They began the following after righteousness. They began the seeking of the Lord. The Bible says, seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek you for the kingdom of God. So it says, hearken unto me, listen to me, those who follow after righteousness. Those who seek the Lord. And it says, there is something to look for your journey to be successful. You are just following. Some people have completed the followership. You are just seeking the Lord. Some people are suffering and suffering to the fullest. Those people are your pioneers. Those people are your parents. They are Abraham and Sarah. Look at them. In other words, go and study them. Look back to them. Look at their journey. Learn from their journey. Stay them. Be imitator of what they did. They are your source. They are your parents. And the Bible says, you see, what you see about them is that I called him alone. You know, he was saying, look to Abraham and your father and to Sarah who bore you. Then the next thing you see is, for I called him alone. And what that means is that they have combined Abraham and Sarah. I called him alone. What did I do? I blessed him and what? Increased him. So, Everything you will see here suggests that oh God did everything. So God said, I called him alone, I blessed him, and I increased him. And if you look at that thing, actually, it looks as though it's God that did everything for Abraham. So if God did everything for Abraham, why is God now recommending them? Why is God now recommending that we should copy them? Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, and I want to tell you something that. God said, I called him alone. And what? And blessed him. And increased him. But you see, Abraham did something between calling and blessing. You see, between calling and blessing is responding. God called him, he responded. And that qualifies him for blessing. That response his faith, he believed. The response he gave to God was that of faith, was that of patience, was that of faith. And so because between being called and being blessed, he is his response. So when God there, I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Between being blessed and being increased, he still faith and patience. Because he kept on responding to God with faith and patience. He kept on believing God. Even when God blessed, and it looks as if the blessing, because the blessing was going to manifest as increase. Because 
the, between being blessed and not an and, and pain increase is still a life cycle. So between being called and being blessed, there is a cycle, a cycle of faith and patience. Between being blessed and being increased, so when God called him, leave your father's house, he responded. And God blessed him. But you see, the blessing were just words of mouth. <laughs> and between being blessed and increased and being increased too, he see a cycle of faith and patience. And God is saying, you know what? If you are a child of Abraham and then a child of Sarah, then look at them. Look to them. Go and study them. I want to back to use the word look. It's not just that you should see them. He said you should stay and learn. And, 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 and looking is beyond just using the eyes. Looking goes beyond just the use of the eyes. Looking includes the use of your perception, the use of your mind, the use of your everything to study. Amen. Cool. So God is saying, go and study Abraham. Go and study uh, there. They are the pioneers of in fact, the reason why you are able to walk after right, to follow after righteousness and fit the law is because they paved the way. So God said, I know Abraham. I cannot keep this secret from him. I know that he will command his children after him to follow me. So we are here. I'm saying today that we are Christians today. We are children of God today. We are new creatures today because of Abraham and Sarah. They are <laughs> hallelujah, amen. amen. So the Bible is saying that every new creature is captured from Abraham, every new creature is dogged from Abraham and Sarah. If you're a child of God and you're a new creature, you are Abraham is your father, Sarah is your mother, and then, like I said, God is saying. You have a history. God is saying you have a lineage. You are not the first person who will follow after righteousness. Abraham, your father, started it. Sarah, your mother, started it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every new creature has a lineage. Every new creature, we have a history. Every one of us who is a new creature, we have an origin. Every one of us who is a new creator, we have a beginning. And that beginning is Abraham and Sarah. For every child of God, the DNA of Abraham and Sarah is in us. Abraham and Sarah are the parents of every new creature. Every new creature is sculptured, every new creature is fashioned, every new, new creature is excavated from Abraham and Sarah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham is our father, Sarah is our mother. Say, no, what? I'm not this. Okay, relax. <laughs> Romans chapter 4. So I want to, I'm still coming back to Isaiah 51, but I just want to establish something because this is Bible study. You need to establish things. Romans chapter 4. So I'm reading from verse 13. I'm reading verse 13. So it says, um, For the promise that he will be the head of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the Lord are heir, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about ruin. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of of us all. Amen. So whether you are a descendant of Jacob, the Bible says Abraham is your father. 
Now, if you are now a new creator, the Bible still says what? Abraham is your father. How did we obtain the paternity of Abraham? By faith. By confessing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we obtain the paternity of what? Abraham. And God is even now saying in this scripture that you see the paternity of Abraham by faith is real. Is more real. Is more authentic. Is more acceptable to God. God reckons with the paternity of Abraham by faith than the paternity of Abraham by law. So, Jesus Christ was telling them, you were saying that Abraham is your father. He said, to stop boasting that Abraham is your father. He said, if you fail to, 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 to worship God, these stones, God will raise stones for Abraham. And that is exactly what God did. He raised stones for Abraham. And the Bible says, we are living stones. Peter says, we are living stones. So, God raised us as God raised children for Abraham by faith. And this is the implication of this statement. It means if anybody gives his life to Christ this moment, Abraham has gained another son, another child. Every time there is crusades, the children of Abraham keep increasing. Every time there is crusade, any time we go on evangelism, I will preach. I and mean, you see, that's why we must be crazy about evangelism. Because Abraham needs more sons. Abraham must get more sons by faith. So when we get born again, when we when people get born again, there is party in heaven, but Abraham is also party in heaven. Why? Right? Because Abraham, Abraham gains more sons, more children. Hallelujah. And so God is saying that you see, every child that comes, everybody, anybody that gets born again and becomes and obtains the paternity of it. The moment you get born again, you obtain the paternity of Abraham. The moment anybody gets born again, you obtain the paternity of Abraham. Immediately, if they check the system of that person, they can see the divine nature and ability of Abraham in that particular person. So Abraham is Abraham stands out among the icon in the hall of faith. He stands out. He stands out. Amen. Maybe we should read Galatians chapter 4, verse 28 to further establish that truth. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 28. So the Bible says, Now we brethren, as it was, we are also children of what? Promise. But as he who was born, okay, let's leave that. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you read verse 27, we say, For it is written, Rejoice over him, you do not bear. Great thought and child, you are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has your husband. Remember that the name of Abraham says, I'll make you one. Out of limitations. So, the, the, you know, one of the arguments is that God did, not have, God did not have a wife. So, how did he give her to his son? You know, those stupid arguments. But you see, we also know that if you adopt a child, if you adopt a child, that child is as much your child as your child. Amen. Amen. Yes. According to the law. So according to the law of God, everybody who gives that to Christ automatically becomes the son of Abraham. And so the ability of Abraham the blessing of Abraham, the blessings of Abraham, everything that Abraham has automatically becomes the property of that person. And the Bible is saying, you see, the only privilege that Isaac has is that Isaac is a biological child. But you see, we are as much children of Abraham. Isaac cannot lay hold on Abraham alone. He has no right to say Abraham is right. Alone, he cannot say no, just like Jesus Christ cannot say no, I'm the only child of, of God. <laughs> Amen. So, the same way, I cannot say no, no, uh, he still was in his father's eyes. Yeah, who are these people? Who are these people? And Isaac cannot say, Isaac dare not say, even in every now, 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 there is Isaac dare not say that Abraham is okay, he's the only child of Abraham. That which is like Isaac, like us. The same privileges that Isaac has in Abraham, we yeah. have. And the Bible is even saying our home is even more authentic because 
Faith is more real than any other thing else. Faith is substantial. Faith is, is substantial than anything else. And so I'm saying tonight that for everybody who gives his life to Christ, the children of Abraham keeps increasing. And you see, till Jesus come, the message of this kingdom will preach, people will press into it, and the more people press into it, the more Abraham gains sons. And how did Abraham come into it, into this? Abraham simply came into this by what God said in Isaiah 51. And all this, he responded. And the blessed thing, he responded. And he increased him. And he said, everybody now has, everybody, everybody now can claim. We are blessed with Abraham. We are blessed with the Father of Abraham. us. Why? Abraham came through faith. He became the father of many nations by faith. And so we became the sons of the father of many nations also by faith. And so I'm saying tonight that every new creation, every new creation in Antidote is sculptured from Abraham. You are hewn from Abraham. You were dug from Abraham and Sarah. You were excavated. I am excavated. You are excavated. You are fashioned. You are sculptured from Abraham. And God is saying the announcement in Isaiah 51 is to us. Is to us. I'm still coming to that. Uh, Galatians 3.16 Let's go back to that particular scripture again. Galatians You have not been there, right? Galatians 3.16 It says, Now unto Abraham. Abraham and his steed were the promises made. He does not say unto feed as of many, but as of one, unto your seed. Uh, and who is Christ? So, you see, Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. And if we have accepted Jesus Christ too, we also automatically became what? The seed of Abraham. So, if they take inside of us, we carry the DNA of Abraham. I'm saying this that Abraham gained Abraham. Oh, Abraham came into this by faith and patience. God called him. He responded. He responded by faith and patience. By this, the Bible says. Became the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and you know, many nations mean many nations. There is a nation of faith, there is a nation of law. There is a nation of religion. You see, the nation of religion, Muslim uh, Islam is an Abrahamic, is an Abrahamic religion. Because Ishmael too is a child of Abraham. And Judaism. Is a is a child of him. There is no religion that almost did not want to trace itself to, to Abraham. Hallelujah. So, law, or according to law, legally, the children of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, many there are twelve nations, right? Uh, what about Esau? Is another nation. So all of them they are connected to what Abraham. But you see, of all the nations, whether the nation of the law, the nation of religion, the nation of economy or anything, because many business ideas too are a product of Abrahamic uh, dimension. But you see, whether Abraham, whether nations, uh, whether nation by law, nation in the flesh, nation of law, nation of flesh, the Bible says the one that God recognizes the most amidst all of them is the nation of faith. And that's the lineage that you and I belong to. That's the nation that is most recognized, that is acceptable. God does not respond to law. Because Abraham did not live by the law. Abraham lived by faith. So, for every new creation, for every new creature, or any new creature, we are seeds of Abraham. Abraham is your father. Abraham has pioneered the law of faith. Abraham has pioneered 
following after righteousness. So if we have been set on that journey, the Bible says that we should copy, we should look at Abraham and say, they were the rock from which we were hewn. They were the beats from which we were dug. We didn't come, we didn't jump down. They have history. They have history. Abraham and Sarah is our father. We have the lineage, the lineage of faith. Abraham and Sarah is our progenitor. Uh, our, our, our progenitor. Is it correct? Yeah. They are our ancestors. They were they are our predecessors. They are our father and mother. I want to say, Omar, if you want to succeed, because of the thing that I want to do in Isaiah 51, that is my promise. If you want to obtain that same promise, if you want that thing which are because of what I want to do in my spirit, that is my promise. If you want to attain it, then listen and listen good. I recommend that you look to your father and mother. Amen. And that's the thing tonight that you see. Abraham is not in the class of Enoch. Abraham is not in the class of uh, Noah. Abraham is not in the class of Abraham. Abraham is not in the class of any other person because any other person that came after Abraham are descendants of Abraham. So they, they in, in a particular way, must have also copied Abraham. Yeah. Because you see, Abraham was an idol worship. There was no traces that he had a father that taught him anything. You know, we saw him, you know, we saw, we saw Abel, we saw uh, Noah. And we could trace their lineage, we could trace them back to the fact that they had fathers, they had forefathers, they had grandfathers that trained them. But you see, by the time he got, we got to Abraham. Abraham was in the midst of idol worshippers. Abraham was in the midst of people who worship idols. Hallelujah. They were stargazers. Abraham was a product of the Torah of Babel. Abraham, so. And in the midst of idolatry, you see, God, God respected, you know, at that point, it's not a problem of whether God was angry with some people or not. It was their lifestyle to worship idols at that moment, to gaze at stars. They would gaze at stars, right? They were magicians. They were wizards. They were, they were witches. They were, they were using stars. They were gazing at stars. They were, they were using stars against people, using stars for their benefit. Just so you know, they were, they were. Hallelujah. I believe you know that man has authority in three realms. So God said, authority over the best of the year. That is in the, uh huh, in the celestial realm, right? <laughs> Authority over the the beast of the land. That's authority in the what terrestrial. And authority over everything in the water. Uh, that is authority in the marine realm. So as they rescue from the fall of Adam, they still had ability to travel into the stars and use the stars against people, use stars to fight, use stars to know the future, use stars to know the the past. You start to manage your business, get wisdom, uh, 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 people to stars. And you understand that when 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 Joseph said that he saw stars bind to him, he saw sun and moon bind to him. You see his father saying that, uh, are you saying that me and your mother and your brothers? So. Jacob was seeing himself as son. Rebecca as what? As moon. Eh? 
and then the, the 11 stars as what is 11 brothers the 11 so they understand those things don't think those people they don't play me please don't play so when they say um, what is your star they say you are you are this <laughs> know what you are saying the stars gazing is the operation in the second heaven and the second heaven is where the principalities are back. So what they were practically doing is that they were cooperating with the principalities and power to rule the affairs of this life. That's what they were doing. That's what they were doing. So you see, they were saying that the stars fought in here in the book of Genesis. So you know that uh, Abraham was in the midst of idol. He was in fact, a stargazer. He was among the people who journeyed to the Hall of Chargers. Abraham at the time, the Bible referred to Abraham as Syria, as a Syrian. A Syrian ready to perish. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you know that uh, for God to think to go to, to call him out of that that is what he has known all his life. That is what he has known. That is what he has known all his life. And God is saying, I called him. And when I called him, he responded. That is it. When I spoke to him, he obeyed. That is it. Even when the thing, the thing I promised him were delayed, he was patient. That is it. And what is saying? You see, you that you don't follow after <laughs> you have a lot to learn from your father Abraham. Because I want to comfort Zion, go and learn from Abraham and Sarah. Because I want to comfort all the waste places of Zion. There are lessons to learn because of the things that I want to do upon the surface of the earth. Go and master Abraham and Sarah because of the things that I want to work. Because I want to turn desert into the garden of the Lord. Because you will not be able to understand fully the things I'm doing by the time I begin to do them unless you have left. Unless you have studied, unless you have mastered your stores, your pioneer, unless you look into your lineage and you trace your, your history back to the beginning, which is Abraham and Sarah, you will not be able to understand these things. You will not be able to cooperate with me. Even though you love me, even though you follow out the righteousness, even though you are seeking me, but you have really not speak sought me unless you know your history, unless you have learned from Abraham and Sarah. So I'm saying that I'm not trying to exaggerate anything tonight. I'm just simply saying what the scripture is saying. And, I'm, and my duty is to paint that thing upon the canvas of your heart. My duty is to amplify this truth in your heart. That you see, uh, we can gloss over a lot of things. And that is why there is virtually none of the apostles who did not write about Abraham. Is it Hebrew? You, you will see reference to Abraham. You see Paul making reference to Abraham. You see James making reference to Abraham. You see you, you, you see uh, 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 um, John. You see, you see James. You see Peter. They all made reference to Abraham because Abraham is the beginning of our faith. Abraham is the beginning of what we call the righteousness of faith. And the Bible says Abraham is the father of us all. And so if you are going to look at Abraham as the one who is the child of Abraham by the faith, then you will not concern yourself about what Abraham did in the law. 
you will concern yourself about how Abraham walked by faith. And so you see, people is saying that the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. God appeared to our father Abraham and journey started. The journey started with the appearance of God to Abraham as the God of glory. And of course, when we talk about glory, we talk about all that he is, all that he has. So God revealed the dimension of all that he is, all that he has. Abraham. So God introduced himself to Abraham as the one who has glory. Hallelujah. Okay, so I need to substantiate that too, so that at Acts of Apostle. Chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 1. He says, Then the high priest said, At this thing so, and he began to read. And he said, Better than fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. That was the beginning of our lineage. That was the beginning of our history. When the Lord appeared to him as the God of glory, he said, Get out. You see, Abraham did not respond. To God, just because God appeared to him, because of the way God appeared to him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody was like, Ah, the God of God of glory appeared to Abraham. That's why he responded. Amen. 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 There were people that God appeared to. It was not recorded in the Bible, but the Bible, uh, the, the extra biblical history told us that Abraham was not the first person that God appeared to. That God appeared to, to Nimrod and he corrupted it. He turned against God. Hallelujah. So it says, for God appeared to our father Abraham. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in here. And said to him, get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Amen. I don't know, maybe you know the Chaldeans. They were the Babylonians later. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the journey began when the God of glory appeared upon him and called him. And the God of glory is the one that is now saying to us that if you want to make a success, if you want to obtain, inherit what your father Abraham inherited, if you want to inherit what your mother Sarah inherited, you need to do a scan, a thorough scan. Their lifestyle must become a syllabus to you. A syllabus to you. A syllabus that we must learn. And that's why uh, for the couple of weeks, for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be trying our best 
Tus quiz. Tus quiz. Tus quiz. Tus quiz. Lessons. From the life of Abraham. You see So tonight is just an introduction. And I, I, I think I, I'll show you why you must copy. Now, I showed us generally we have lessons to learn from all the patriarchs and patriarchs. But you see, uh, the lessons to be learned from the life of Abraham is a core course. You see, if every other patriarch is three units, four units, <laughs> the lessons from the life of Abraham eh, is, is one million units. You can't afford to fail it. You can't afford to carry it. Hallelujah. So even in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 that we read, if you look at the following scripture, we make, we make reference to what? Abraham. So, it seems to me as though when Paul, I believe Paul wrote it, when Paul was saying something about the fact that we should not be slaughtered, it was, I, I believe that he was talking solely about Abraham and Sarah. Because the next verse, the next verse spoke about, spoke about what? Abraham. So I will, I will implore you to, to take time to pray and prepare your heart. I believe that there are things God wants to do because the essence of this study is not just to add to our body of knowledge. It's so that we can pay attention. I believe God is calling us attention back to the journey of faith. I, I, I believe that this is not just a study. I believe that this is not just um, an addition to our body of knowledge. I think and I know that God wants to do something with our life. Just like he wants to he made an example out of the life of our father and mother Hebrew and Sarah. God wants to bring us to a place where we also can inherit the promise of God. Our course, so that our lives can make many more the sons of Abraham and Sarah. Of course, we cannot start say I won't be father of anything again. But then we can, our life can reveal the covenant that God had with Abraham, and that is the intention of God that every child of Abraham continue to be an expression and an evidence of the covenant that God called with our father. Amen. You see so many things. There are so many things to I'm praying to God to help me find my thoughts again. I'm praying to God that for the sake of everybody that, that will listen to me, God should help me to align my so that I can arrange, I can arrange the things that God has to say about him in a in a in a way that will be able to make logical conclusion. Because a lot of things will come up, a lot of things will come up as we learn about the lessons of Abraham. I want to try as much as possible to to pick to spend time in studying myself so that I can. Everywhere they mention, they mention the name of Abraham in the Bible. That's what they want us to touch. So that we can squeeze. And I'm praying that beyond just the words, we will have an encounter. That will leave an indelible mark in our lives. So we have an encounter that will convert these words to impartation. That will convert these words to activation. That will convert these words to, to, to direction for us, to implantation. That will convert this world to an engraftment in our lives. I want us to go ahead and, and thank God for His word tonight. Go ahead and thank Him because of His word that He has sent to us. Oh Jesus, we give you praise. Oh Jesus, we give you praise for your word. Oh Jesus, we bless your name. Oh Jesus, we glorify your holy name. Oh Jesus, we give you praise. Oh Jesus, we give you praise. Oh 
We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to talk to God that we are, uh, our heart are humble enough. We are humble enough to imitate. We refuse to be sluggish. We refuse to be uh, languid. We refuse to be dull. We refuse to be stupid on this part. But we are often enough to follow, to imitate those who through faith and patience. Those who through faith and patience, we imitate them. We are not too proud to imitate. We are not too, we are not too stupid to follow after them. We are not too, we are not too, we are not, uh, we are not uh, lazy. We are not indolent. In our work with you, Lord, our hearts are humble, our hearts are hungry enough to follow after this recommendation of yours. You have recommended that we should imitate those who through faith and patience obtain the promise of God. We are not flawed, Lord. We are not sluggish, Lord. We are not indolent. We are not lazy. We are not dull. We are not stupid. We are not languid. Jesus, we follow. Jesus, we receive grace. Jesus, we, we maximize grace. Jesus, we maximize this grace. Our ears are open to hearing the truths that you want to show us from the life of these precious and makers. Our, our eyes, our hearts are receptive to the teaching. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we are we are corrigible, Lord. We are corrigible. As you instruct us, we embrace instruction. As you correct us through the lives of these patriots and matriots. As you instruct us, Lord. As you, you impact us through their lives, we are hopeful. We receive. We come with open hearts. We come with it. We come with a, 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 a fleshy heart, a heart that is not that is not hard, a heart that is not stony, a heart that is not stony. Lord Jesus, in the Mate Pogap is a big of relief on saying to pray, Parati Dondami, Parate Dondami Shaka, Zoi Valiki, the most of the party, the grab in Lisbon. Oh, Lord, our focus is on obtaining the promises. Our focus is on inheriting the promises. For this is our Lord, for this is our Lord, you have called us for. For this is why you have and uh, you have you have drawn you, you have drawn us to you, Lord, to obtain to inherit. Lord, we want to become inheritor of these promises. And so, Lord, we obey your voice, we obey the feeling, we obey the teaching. In the name of Jesus, my last Mondes de Zepe de Magista, Ziat Peria Pazeta, Gamins of Lebesia, Susini de Pari, Jomamba de Gant, Mue, Ozen, Ipozate, La Bada Napozo, Pegede, La Cante Pegede de Pani, Shukibra, the Peace to Zelly, to Bleget, Jomia, Oscar, and Rap, Peta, Yasita, Lede, Oson, the Lepra, Aske, Likriso. Lord, say, Father, that we are not disobedient to this instruction of yours. We are obedient. Lord, the cup and cast the soul together. We show the same diligence. We show the same diligence. We show the same diligence. The same diligence. The same diligence. The same diligence of faith and patience. The same diligence of faith and patience. The same diligence of faith and patience. He must go see the river, cross, grandad, the preserve of God, Jambran, and Tapi, 
was the first to use the big adik on that we had to make it. Bring your prophet that the best adik will be stuck. As you begin to reveal yourself to us through the lives and times of Abraham and Sarah. In your world, Lord, our hearts are hungry, our hearts are open. We are ready to learn in the name of Jesus. Our lives will be better for each in the name of Jesus. Our lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. We do away with haughtiness. We do away with pride. We do away with 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 with, with haughtiness, Lord. We do away with superfluity of nothingness. In the name of Jesus, we embrace the word in meekness. We embrace the teachings in meekness. In the name of Jesus, stop at that step that comes from the body. Jamie was a baby of your country. So when they divide the money for your country, we can stop it. We can never let you shut down the body. Yes. Oh, that's a day of the people to come in. That day that they gave the reason to be intense that these promises of you might become a heritage. Oh, stop at that. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name.